Part two. And when a hooligan loses his temper, he really loses it. A hooligan in a rage yells so loudly it makes his ordinary yelling sound like a baby's lullaby. I declare a blood feud, yelled Stoic the Vast. Oh, brother, Hiccup raised his eyes to the heavens. I don't believe this. This is all we need. Hang on a minute, father. Let's stay calm here. I really don't think this was from the bog burglars. We haven't got their heir, have we? Someone else must have stolen her. I overheard the Romans saying that they would pretend to be the bog burglars so they can get us to fight each other. You stay out of this, Hiccup, roared Stoic the Vast. Politics is for grown-ups. Fetch me my sword. Sound the war horns. I want every man, woman and child practising their sword fighting night and day for the next two weeks. But father, protested Hiccup, please use your head here. I am using my head, roared Stoic the Vast, head-butting the wall. If those bog burglars set one toe into hooligan waters, by Thor, they're going to regret it. Hiccup could feel himself getting cross too. He didn't stand up to his father very often, but he was so upset about Toothless that he got up and stood in front of Stoic with his hands on his hips. Why don't you believe me? he asked furiously. I have told you and told you this is the work of the Romans. I've even brought you back a Roman helmet to prove it. Hiccup pointed to the Roman helmet, which was sitting on a stool in the corner of the room. We could send out a war party to go and find these Romans, and Toothless too, but oh no, you'd rather stay here beating up the bog burglars than believe the word of your own son. For a moment, it seemed as if Hiccup was getting through to his father. Stoic's nostrils stopped flaring and he ceased to paw the ground with his foot. He looked at the Roman helmet. Maybe, just maybe, Hiccup was right. But then he looked at big boobied Bertha's letter and his temper returned. The only good bog burglar is a dead bog burglar, shouted Stoic at the top of his voice and he stalked out of the room. Don't blame your father too much, will you, Hiccup? said old Wrinkly sadly. He means well, but when things get complicated, he gets confused. By the way, aren't you going to be late for your frightening foreigners lesson? Oh my goodness, said Hiccup, so I am. Chapter 8. The Frightening Foreigner's Lesson It was a glorious blue breezy day, but Hiccup had no time to admire it. He ran as fast as he could towards the great hall where the Frightening Foreigner's Lessons was being held. Gobba hadn't arrived yet, so the young barbarians were making a gigantic racket. Sharp Knife and Tough Nut Junior were having a sword fight in one corner. The boys' dragons were lying in front of the gigantic fire, snapping and snarling at each other. Snotlout and Dog's Breath, the Durbrain, were sitting on fish legs, while Fireworm set fire to a pile of fish legs workbooks. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, you brainless brutes? snapped Hiccup at the bullies, putting out the fire with his jacket. Thanks, Hiccup, panted fish legs. Well, well, well drawled Snotlout, removing his knee from Fishleg's stomach and sauntering over to where Hiccup was sitting. Some Vikings you two are. I hear you couldn't even tell the difference between a peaceable fishing boat and a 70 metre Roman ship. And you've got to be the first pirates ever to sink their own boat. Ha 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 ha, laughed all the other boys. And most pathetic of all, jeered Snotlout. You lost your ridiculous, fangless microbe of a dragon. Some loss, sneered Fireworm, sharpening her claws on Hiccup's helmet with an acutely unpleasant scritching noise. That creature was a disgrace to us green-blooded far brothers of the snake. Toothless was a fine, fine dragon, said Hiccup, quietly trying to keep his temper. He was a hopeless dragon, mocked Snotlout. Never mind, Hiccup. He'll make a much better Roman handbag. You take that back, you snot-faced, snot-nosed, elephant-nostrilled, bottom-brained bully, yelled Hiccup. The door opened with a gigantic crash. Excellent advanced rudery, Hiccup, roared Gobba the Belch. We'll make a Viking of you yet. I hope you don't mind, sir, spat Snotlout, advancing on Hiccup with his fists raised and a nasty look in his eye. If I just kill him for that one. 
But I do mind, said Grubber. This is a frightening foreigner's lesson, it's not a free-for-all. Sit down, you horrible little excuses for Vikings. The boys scrambled for their places on the floor at Gobber's feet. Even Snotcloud knew better than to disobey Gobber, and he sat down too, muttering darkly to Hiccup that he would get him later. Right, this lesson is all about taking money with menaces, yelled Gobber. Hiccup, Waterhog, stand up here in the front. Right, Hiccup, I want you to be the hooligan invader, and Waterhog, I want you to be the simple, ghoulish farmer. What terrifying techniques can you use to get Waterhog's belongings? Hiccup got to his feet, but he wasn't really concentrating. Um, Excusez-moi, uh, mon brave, said Hiccup, absentmindedly. Uh, mais uh, pouvez-vous uh, me, me donner uh, votre... Waterhog bashed him. Oh, for thought's sake, Hiccup. Sorry, let me just stop there. It's my doorbell.